Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, your favorite medical channel. Today we will continue our discussion about our pulmonary playlist. We will talk about bronchiolitis today. It's an obstructive lung disease, but the question is, is it a disease of the young or a disease of adults? With that being said, now let's get started. As you already know, lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out. Restrictive, I cannot get the air in. Obstructive, asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, and bronchiolitis. Your typical lung patient has cough and dyspnea, and you have one of five categories to choose from. It could be an obstructive lung disease, restrictive lung disease, pulmonary vascular abnormality, infections, or malignancy. Here are the obstructive lung diseases, asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis, and bronchiolitis, which is today's topic. There are two types of bronchiolitis, children, viral infection in the winter, or it can happen to adults. Okay, here is my mnemonic. I'm not making fun of patients. I'm trying to make medicine easy for medical students so that they can help patients. Number one, you're smoking your lungs out. Translation, respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease. That's why smoking can lead to an obstructive lung disease such as COPD or a restrictive lung disease such as respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease. This is a mouthful. Or you could be you're working your tail off. Occupational exposure to these materials such as diacetyl or nitrogen dioxide. You are transplanting an organ in. Post organ transplant, you can have a restrictive lung disease. You are being beaten up by O2 antibodies such as rheumatoid arthritis and scleroderma. Both are O2 immune diseases. So bronchiolitis could happen in children. You should talk to your pediatrician. Or it should happen to adults. In this case, you should seek an internal medicine doctor, especially a pulmonologist. I'm just making it easy for you, instead of just the nurse sending you all over the hospital. In adults, you're smoking your lungs out, or you're walking your tail end off, or you're transplanting an organ in, or you're being beaten up by O2 antibodies. Acute bronchiolitis is an obstructive lung disease. It's a condition characterized by inflammation, that's why it's called itis, or infection of bronchioles leading to a difficulty of expiration, that's the definition of obstructive lung disease, leading to air trapping, that's why you have increased in residual volume, which will increase the total lung capacity. Happens to infants and young children, especially during winter. More common in boys, infants or children who were not breastfed. Crowded areas or poverty, so the exam question can describe like a two-year-old boy who lives in overcrowded slums in New York and he's presenting with cough, fever, sneezing, clear rhinorrhea, decreased appetite, wheezing, and grunting. What's the diagnosis? Acute bronchiolitis. What's the most common cause? RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. Other causes include enterovirus, adenovirus, or parainfluenza virus. That's why bronchiolitis could be associated or could accompany or coexist with croup because croup was caused by para-influenza virus, which is a paramyxovirus, which is a negative sense RNA virus. Please be aware that RSV often coexist with influenza virus. The most common cause of bronchiolitis and or pneumonia in children is RSV. This is a famous exam question. Or it could be related to repeated aspiration such as GERD. Symptoms and signs of acute bronchiolitis. Symptoms, fever, sneezing, clitorinorrhea, decreased appetite. Signs, wheezing and grunting. The most common cause of wheezing in infants is bronchiolitis, period, end of issue. How to diagnose acute bronchiolitis clinically? Chest x-ray infiltrates an air trapping because it's a freaking obstructive lung disease. Biopsy will show multinucleated giant cells. That's why we call the nasty virus respiratory syncytia virus because it forms a syncytia, which is a multinucleated giant cell. PCR is the most accurate test, rarely done in this case because it's a clinical diagnosis. Why go so far and waste lots of money when the diagnosis is clear? Complications, it can lead to pneumothorax. 
how to treat this stinking acute bronchitis supportive care pulse oximetry to measure and monitor the hypoxia humidified oxygen please do not give sedatives why it can lead to respiratory depression in a patient who already has an obstructive lung disease this is not fun i'm trying not to say stupid you can give bronchodilators or corticosteroids when in doubt give steroids these drugs work like magic but everything in life has pros and cons they have lots of side effects especially when used for a long period of time as dr thomas soul said there are no solutions in life there are trade-offs now we are done with the bronchiolitis in pediatric patients also known as children now let's talk about adults let's adult hashtag adulting there are two complications of hematopoietic stem cell transplant collectively called bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia two diseases bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia they occur more than three months after transplant and let's compare between those two nasty diseases cryptogenic organizing pneumonia pathology restrictive lung disease bronchiolitis obliterans it's called bronchiolitis it's an obstructive lung disease symptoms any respiratory disease without even thinking dyspnea and dry cough dyspnea and dry cough except if you know that the cough is not dry but dyspnea and cough you should be fine diagnosis this is associated with cmv and graft versus host disease but let's talk about the diagnosis here radiology diffuse fluffy infiltrate evidence of air trapping that's why it's an obstructive lung disease okay you're trying to understand now barrel chest bronchiectosis again obstructive and maybe infiltrates let's talk about bronchoscopy with biopsy which is the most accurate test here you'll find granulation tissue not to be confused with granuloma within the alveolar space and small airways here biopsy is not sensitive or specific collagen granulation tissue and bronchial structure obliteration of small airways that's why we call it obliterans duh treatment corticosteroids it's entirely reversible and this one also responds to immunosuppressants such as corticosteroids my favorite part of the lecture clinical pearls cmv virus is associated with two main categories generalized or localized generalized immunosuppression people who are immunosuppressed are more likely to get cmv infection or organ specific especially rejection related give me example in kidney transplant recipients they can get glomerulopathy and this is going to be associated with cmv in lung transplant recipient bronchiolitis obliterans heart transplant recipient they get vasculopathy liver transplant recipient they get vanishing bile duct syndrome all of this is related to the nasty cmv elevated immunosuppressant leads to increase cmv replication increasing your risk of graft rejection because it leads to all of this nasty stuff it's not good when you have weak immunity structural lung diseases such as cystic fibrosis bronchiectasis or chronic relapsing pan bronchiolitis can lead to stasis bacteria will love you especially pseudomonas chronic relapsing br pan bronchiolitis what's that unknown etiology chronic colonization especially with pseudomonas starts in childhood and seen in some asian populations such as japan and pacific islands so pseudomonas is related to cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis is related to bronchiectasis and also this nasty pseudomonas is related to bronchiolitis and cystic fibrosis can lead to bronchitis see allograft transplant when you get like an organ from your friend leads to diffuse pan bronchiolitis in some patients consider ribavirin for children hospitalized with rsv pneumonia or rsv bronchiolitis because rsv in kids is the most common cause of pneumonia and or bronchiolitis there are two main uses of ribavirin rsv and chronic hepatitis c let's talk quickly about adenovirus persistent asymptomatic infection in tonsils and adenoid tissue that's why we called it adenovirus whenever i say adenovirus please remember conjunctivitis it can lead to upper respiratory infection or lower respiratory infection upper such as common cold and croup lower such as bronchiolitis and pneumonia acute adenovirus can lead to pharyngeal conjunctival fever 
Let's try some Pavlovian classical conditioning in behaviorism. Adeno, conjunctivitis. Stimulus, response. Adeno, conjunctivitis. Bats, histoplasmosis. Pigeon, cryptococcus. Earthquakes, coccidioide mycosis. Paraneoplastic pemphigus can lead to life-threatening bronchiolitis and obliterans. Pemphigus vulgaris. It's vulgar, man. It's horrible. Bronchiolitis plus organizing age date plus lung fibrosis plus occupational exposure. Exposure, please think hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which we'll talk about later. In case of ventilation-acquired pneumonia, the respiratory bronchiolitis may occur even before any radiologically apparent infiltrate that's why you need to use your clinical sense and not rely on a stupid butt machine very quick summary acute bronchitis chronic bronchitis acute bronchiolitis chronic bronchiolitis acute bronchitis dry or productive cough in winters virus especially in kids chronic bronchitis copd smoking cup folds of mucus but if the question says cup folds of pus think bronchiectasis Acute bronchitis, children, winter, virus. Chronic bronchitis, cystic fibrosis. And in cystic fibrosis, you will have cup folds of pus. Let's talk about bronchitis obliterans again. It's called obliterans. It's an obstructive lung disease. Happens post-transplant. Associated with the nasty CMV and the horrible graft versus host disease. Due to exposure to all of these chemicals such as diacetyl, nitrogen dioxide, and whatever. Diacetyl compounds are found in microwave popcorn with butter flavor. Super sophisticated. I went to the movie last year and I ate butter flavored popcorns. Am I going to get bronchitis obliterans? No, honey, calm down. We are talking about a worker who packages like a thousand packages of the butter flavored microwave popcorn every single stinking day. By the way, rheumatoid arthritis can lead to bronchiolitis or bronchiectasis. Systemic sclerosis can lead to bronchiolitis. Remember that respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease is associated with smoking. Again, smoking can lead to obstructive or restrictive lung disease. It's going to present with cough and dyspnea. No kidding, it's a lung problem. Intrinsic restrictive lung disease because the problem is in the stinking lung. Patchy, diffuse, centrilobular, ground glass nodules. Ground glass is going to be repeated a lot. Let's wrap it up. Bronchiolitis, a disease of the young, infants, and children. And it can also happen in adults in these situations. You're smoking your lungs out. You're working your tail off. You're transplanting an organ in. You're ventilating your lungs mechanically. You're being beaten up by O2 antibodies. Okay, let's get technical. Respiratory bronchiolitis associated interstitial lung disease related to smoking. Occupational exposure post-organ transplant, ventilation-associated pneumonia, rheumatoid, and scleroderma. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, follow me on Facebook. You can get my Dropbox notes by going to patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.